Hello, I'm here with my friend Leela Sinha. She is a Unitarian Universalist minister, a coach, a consultant, and has done lots of amazing things. She's a licensed massage therapist. She's lived in four countries and has been an IT person and a parish minister and lots of other things and has done lots of amazing things and discovered lots of amazing things. And one of the most interesting and maybe powerful discoveries is something that happened starting in December 2014 after a back injury that had her laying flat on her back. And from that came a book. So how did you turn a back injury into a book? <laughs> With a Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, well, obviously. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, a back injury basically immobilizes you for an extended period of time. And when you're not able to do anything but lie there and think, you do a lot of thinking. Um, and and for me, a lot of thinking meant dealing with a lot of kind of hidden demons and old stuff and wondering what I had done wrong and how the world has changed and what I could have done differently. And I started thinking about relationships and jobs that I'd had challenges with and um, and a variety of different things in my life that hadn't gone the way I'd, at all the way I'd planned. And as I started to think about that, some patterns started to percolate up. And it turns out that a lot of people who complain about me have the same complaints. Okay. Um, a lot of people who complain about me tell me that I'm too much, that I need to tone it down, that I need to back off, that I need to sit still and be quiet, and that I'm getting too uppity and too big for my britches. And there are a variety of reasons for that, but some of it is that I do have a really strong, really intense personality. I get really animated. I get really excited about stuff. When I get depressed, it's really dangerous, and I get really depressed. And, and so I started to think about how those things all fit together in a personality. And then I started to ask, so who are my best clients? And it turns out they have the same problems I do, <laughs> which is really normal. Um, and as I started to think about it, it all started to make sense. It started, you know how that you have that moment where everything is chaos and then you have that next moment where suddenly the pattern is visible? Yeah. I had one of those moments. And so I got on Facebook and I started telling people about it. And I got this flood of response, like 53 comments. I'm not a 53 comments all the time sort of person. I'm like a two comments or a like and a comment kind of person. And, um, and so I thought, huh, that's interesting. I wonder if that'll happen again. So I was still thinking about it. So I typed another response and uh, it happened again. And so I started to really see that being an intense person isn't just a problem in our culture. It isn't something to be shunted to the side. It's not a problem to be fixed. It's not an issue to be resolved. It's actually a thing. Like, there are a bunch of us out there. Yeah. And that's what the book is about. That's what the book is about. So I ended up with a working title first. Uh, so the book is called You're Not Too Much. And from that working title, I started to branch out and say, okay, so what happens when intense people are trying to interact with not intense people? And what happens when intense people are in relationships? And what happens when they're at work? And what happens? And why did all this happen at all? And then I started to feed into a much larger question, which I hope somebody will pick up in research, uh, about the issues of institutionalized racism and the colonial history of this country and many countries around the world. Yeah. So what you've created is a framework that's based around a scale. Why don't, why don't you share that with us? So there's a 10 point scale. It's a zero to 10 scale. And, you know, if you have intense people, then you also have not intense people, but not intense people is really awkward and does not roll off the tongue and isn't really fair. It doesn't really describe because there are all these gifts that come from the other end of the scale. So I started to talk about people who are not intensive as expansives and people who are intense as intensives. So now we have expansives at the zero end of the scale and intensives at the 10 end of the scale and a full continuum in the middle. So you might be a five or a six or a four, 
or you might be a nine like me, <laughs> or you might be a two like somebody in, in one of the board presentations I did recently, um, who is willing to learn about this, but really perplexed about why anybody would get all that excited about anything. Wow. So not everybody gets really excited about everything? <laughs> Right. Not everybody gets really excited about everything. So the expansives are, um, are lovely, beautiful people. They're calm. They're measured. They're what we call responsible. They tend to behave in a more civilized manner. Um, and some of that bias in the language shows up in our culture. And our culture actually favors expansives instead of intensives. Our culture tends to favor that kind of measured, regular nine to five every day, show up, do your thing, slow and steady wins the race. That's an expansive. Yeah. Yeah. So, but we need both. We need both. We have to have both because intensives light the fire and expansives keep it burning. So if you don't have somebody to start things off, then you're never going to get anywhere. But intensives get really, really excited about a project and we work on it as long as it's a puzzle for like 80% of the way, right? We're not sure it's going to work. That kind of excites us. That gets us really involved. And so we work and work and work and work and work. We get to 80%. We can see not only that it's possible to finish, but how it would be finished. We know we can do it. The minute we know we can do it, we're not interested anymore. And we start off on the next shiny thing. So we need the expansive influence in our culture, in our space, in our life to help us continue to do the thing until it's 100% done. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise we leave all these 80% done projects around us. So it's not helpful for expansives to try to be intensive or intensives to try to be expansive. No, no, that's, that's painful. It's really painful. Um, intensives usually find out that we're intensive because somebody else tells us we're too much. We don't actually inherently feel like there's anything wrong until the culture gets at us for it. Um, and when intensives try to be expansive, we become what I call squished intensives. We get compressed. Um, Probably a better social science word would be something like um, suppressed. <laughs> um, we try really hard to be smaller because we don't want we don't want to hurt anyone. We don't want to cause trouble. We kind of like to stir shit, but only because if we don't do that, then we feel like there are all these possibilities and opportunities that aren't being opened up. Um, we we don't like to hurt people for its own sake. That's not kind of yeah, who we are. Sure. Um, so, so we try to be smaller, we try to be more compact, we try to be well behaved, we try to be civilized and responsible. And mm -hmm. what happens is that we end up really depressed and stressed out from trying to be so compressed, and our gifts get lost completely. So part of the point of this book is that, uh, that our gifts are needed. All the gifts are needed. You know, we need the expensives, we need the intensives. But since our culture favors expansives, intensives need an extra kind of shot of support um, to make sure that we keep ourselves in the running and that we don't destroy ourselves in the process of trying to survive in a world that's not built for us. Yeah. Yeah. So how could we make the world more friendly to both intensives and expansives? Oh, that's the next book. <laughs> or maybe the book after that. Um, so the most important thing we can do is look for the gifts and design to the gifts. So if you have a group of people, say in a corporation or an institution, mm -hmm. you have a group of people working on a project, don't put the intensive on the regular, everyday, little at a time, well-metered, well-managed part of the project. Don't do it because the intensive is going to get bored and drop the ball. Mm -hmm. Give the intensive the big, splashy, five weeks, work like hell, and then rest. Give that to the intensive and give the expansive the really nice and regular, predictable, everyday kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And so if, uh, if people are listening to this and hearing you talk about intensives and saying, that's me. Yay, we found you. Welcome. <laughs> Do you have advice for people who are in that position for how, what, how they can approach things in a way that might make things easier for them? Yeah, come hang out with me. Um, <laughs> I have discovered that it's really easy for me to make friends with intensives. Um, advice for intensives in a, just a general yeah. way. 
don't be afraid of yourself because the world may have taught you that you should be afraid of yourself. Go find other people like you. Find careers that support your intensiveness. Find ways to nourish your intensiveness. Give yourself space and time. Give yourself the opportunity to, um, to engage projects in a really deep way. And then allow yourself the time to rest. Make sure you get the time to rest. Because once you're able to do that and really accept and, and honor and acknowledge yourself and your own gifts, then it starts to show up in the people around you. They can't help it. And if people really hate it, they'll go away. And that's useful too. Yeah. And what if somebody's listening to this and saying, oh, I think I might be an expansive, but my son, daughter, husband, wife, boss, colleague is that off the thing. scale intensive. <laughs> um, again, go for the gifts. You know, I think it depends on how you're responding. If as an expansive, you're kind of okay with it, you're just like, oh, wow, that sounds like my person. Then great, now you know something. If you're struggling with the intensiveness in your environment, if you're struggling with, say, an intensive kid, which I've heard mm -hmm. from a lot of parents who yeah. are really struggling with their kids when the parent is more expensive than the kid, um, it's really important to give them a lot of autonomy and a lot of agency. Ask them what they need. They probably know. They may have been told that it's wrong, so you need to reassure them that it's not wrong. Mm -hmm. And then really figure out what their gifts are, what their natural inclination is, and see how well you can shift whatever the environment is or the structure is so that you have um, so that you have something that works for both of you. Yeah. Uh, the, one of the most toxic things that can happen is that you tell them that they're wrong because that sets up this really oppositional dynamic and that's not useful no matter what kind of thing you're negotiating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very true. So I hope we've intrigued you. This I, I as soon as Leela told me about this concept, and I was fortunate enough to be one of the first people to find out about it because I was around, <laughs> and I, I was so excited. I was one of the people who was super excited about it and still am. And I hope that this is helpful. And if it is, I hope you'll want to find out more. And to do that, we will put some links on the screen so that you can see where to go on the web or to follow Leela on Facebook or Twitter. And you really like people to reach out. I do. I love people to reach out. I've made so many awesome friends from this project and from previous similar projects. Um, you can find me on Facebook and private message me. We'll have a conversation and we can friend each other. Um, you can find me on Twitter. You can um, get on my email. If, if you're actually, if you're in the greater Portland, Maine area, you can come find me at the church too. I'm affiliated with First Parish Church in Portland and I'm happy to, to have meetings there as well. So Great. Great. So thank you. And for those of you who want more information, we're going to be making more of these videos. We're definitely going to do videos about talking about intensives as children and parents and intensives in interpersonal and romantic relationships. And then there's this whole thing that not only does people being intensive or expansive in their work matter about how they do their work, but it also whole organizations can be intensive or expansive. Or expansive yeah. And we're going to do a video about that too. So watch this space. <laughs> <laughs>